What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Creative Differences Podcast. Today's episode is quite the treasure. Ha ha! Oh. I'm Dallas. I'm Dallas. I'm and disappointed. No, nah, that's fair. But it's a treasure. Not you get really. it? Do you get it? All right. Can we finish the intro? Okay, sorry. <sighs> anyway, I'm Colin, and I'm, you know, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, and I'm Demi. One day I will have all these hosts on one podcast. Also hoping that all those Star Wars fans out there had a happy May the 4th. Speaking of space adventures, today we are fan casting Treasure Planet. We are. Also, Gabby got sucked into a black hole. That's why she's not here. <laughs> Before we get started on this underrated Disney film that definitely deserves a live action picture. The rules are, there are no rules. You guys can cast anybody you want. Does That's not good, matter. Because I didn't think there were rules i'm glad there, there were no <laughs> rules sweet people on the internet listening to the fan cast if you're listening on spotify or apple Podcasts, you should jaunt on over to youtube because demi will be putting up pictures of the characters and pictures of the actors so when you hear me say who i picked for jim's mom you'll be like who's that and then demi will have a picture up and you'll be like oh her got it so yeah go to youtube let's get into this shall we are you guys ready always yep all right, so our first character is James Pleadies Hawkins, a.k.a. Jim, a rebellious, free-spirited teenage boy who wants to do better for his mom but keeps getting himself into trouble. He is entrusted with a map to Captain Flint's lost treasure by the pirate Billy Bones before he dies. So, Dallas, start us off. Billy Bones is a dope-ass name for a pirate. Sorry. Right? Um, <laughs> anyway, Jim Hawkins. So, I watched this movie a while back, and then I was like, he's, you we know. We together. We did. And then I watched it again yesterday, like by happenstance. Because like not for this, you just happened to watch it. I walked into the living room and somebody was watching it, and I was like, "Oh, oh, look at that! I can do some more research. It's great." So Jim is rebellious, and he's that kind of like low key angsty, in trouble, rough around the edges kind of teenager. According to the wiki page, he's sixteen. And I just, I was gonna cast Diego Tenoco from On My Block, but I feel like I've kind of been using him for all my angsty teen roles. And at this point, he's like in his early 20s. So I was like, let me try to challenge myself. So I say all that to say, I really picked Asher Angel from Shazam. Nice. Yes, because he's, he's dope. He's very good at playing that rough around the edges, angsty teenager. And like the first scene, well, one of the first scenes in Treasure Planet of Teenage Jim, he gets in trouble with the law. And Billy Batson does pretty much the same thing, except he's better at it. So he kind of gets away. But I think Asher could bring all of the charm slash angst slash this kid's kind of a dick, but I want to root for him. Even though I wouldn't say that about Jim, <laughs> just more about Billy. So yeah, Asher Angel, because he's actually young enough for this. Colin. Me. So my choice for Jimothy Hawkins was Maisie sure. Williams. Mainly okay. Maisie Williams. Aria. Oh, go, Game, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Yeah. She already plays kind of a rebellious character in that, especially in like the early seasons. And I definitely feel like she could be that plucky, adventure-loving kid who also gets into trouble because she's done it. I know she can do it. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to gender bend it, she definitely does fit the character persona. Would her name still be James? Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there are girls named James out there. Not very often. Are there? there are girls named James out there? <laughs> yeah, there's a celebrity who named their child James, their daughter James. Huh. I don't remember who, but I'm going to find it later. All right. Shout out to all the girls named James out there. So my Jim Hawkins is Benjamin Wadsworth, most well known for Deadly Class. Who? Exactly. <laughs> I had him for another fan cast too. I think I had him for Jason Todd. I think you did. Uh, I remember that name from you. Yeah. Clearly, I like him for the rebellious teenager. He basically had to do that on Deadly Class, except Deadly Class is so much darker than Treasure Planet <laughs> would ever be. True. But yeah, he's just a really good actor. He's really good at playing these really angsty type of hero roles, even though Marcus as a hero is questionable. <laughs> but I feel like he could pull off playing Jim Hawkins. He's got that emotional range to pull that off. But also just like seems like a really cool guy because Jim's kind of got a cool streak about him because he's got the rough around the edges, bad boy uh, appeal. Definitely. And I think Benjamin has got that also i think it would be really cool i think he i think he would pull off the the gym haircut that he's got going that like shaved sides interesting ponytail in the back yeah that's I a think. that's a choice 
I love that haircut. I would keep it. <laughs> I've always thought Jim's haircut was so cool because it was so weird and so different. Because uh, back then we weren't quite doing the shaved sides things with like the overly long top. Yeah, the undercut um, wasn't really popping back in 2002. Yeah, so Jim Jim Hawkins was ahead of his time. So was this movie. <laughs> I respect it. And plus, Benjamin Wadsworth is like just about to turn 21 or something this year. So he's still young enough to play the role. Yeah, definitely. All right. So our next character is John Silver, a greedy and cunning pirate who takes on the job of a cook on the voyage to Treasure Planet. But his care for Jim becomes a weakness. Dallas. John Silver. All right. My pick for John Silver. Sorry, you were just oh in that direction. John Silver. <laughs> All right, sorry. See, now I wish I picked John Cena, but I didn't. <laughs> sorry. No, I just have to live with that disappointment. <laughs> anyway, I did pick someone named John. I picked John Goodman for John Silver. Okay. Because okay, okay. As okay. a kid, like every time I watch this movie, for some reason, he just reminds me of John Goodman. Huh. I don't know if it's his size. Like he doesn't sound like him, but it's something about like the character design. Like he's just kind of big gruff he just reminds me he has this like there's like different sides to this character like there's different sides to john goodman because you know growing up i'd only seen like monster zinc and various things where he's kind of the nice but lovable gruff big guy Mm -hmm. and he could definitely pull that off but he's a really good actor and he has a lot of range and yeah once you see like exactly once you see that i'm like this man could definitely play a homicidal pirate if he needed to because a homicidal pirate who's pretending that he cares about you the entire time. Yes, he was terrifying in that movie. And I remember we saw that together. Yes, it was an experience. And like John Goodman is a great actor. And he's also in um Fallen. I think it's a Denzel Washington movie about like demons and such. Wasn't he and also in that movie recently with like aliens and they like took over the world or something? Sounds like we're back to Saint Cloverfield Lane. Is there another one he did with that? It's, yeah, uh, head of this something, uh, something state, something captive state. Was that the one? Oh, was he in that one? I want to say he was. Anyway, no, no, no. doesn't matter. He could play a pirate named John with a <laughs> scary gold eye. I've often because he's a great actor and he's big. Feel about playing characters who share their name? I feel like it'd be easier. Right? Would it or would it be weirder? Mm. I mean, just call me John. Like John. Chris Tucker kept calling like John. Chris Tucker kept calling Jackie Chan Jackie in Rush Hour, and they had to keep stopping the scene for it. That wouldn't happen in this case. Oh, yeah. Good point. That's true. And Colin, you were right. He was in Captive State. Nice. Ooh. Well, yes. John Goodman, John Silver. Make it happen. I found the person who named their child James. And oh, funnily enough, it was Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. What? Oh. Their daughter's name is James. That's weird. Colin, who did you choose for John Silver? <laughs> Jesus. Ah, uh, that was abrupt. So... My choice for John Silver, I think I can say his name right, I've now listened to him say it like 20 times, is Lucien Msamati, who is not very well known outside of like nope. his theater work, I guess, but is known for playing Salador's son in Game of Thrones. And I love Salador's son a lot. I he didn't to, get enough to do in that show, but he was a pirate and he was a really fun pirate. And I wanted Oh, from to play season like again. two? Yeah, he hung out with Stannis for a while. Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mainly, like, I know he can play a pirate, so I want to see him play a pirate again. There you go. Yeah, he was really good on Game of Thrones. Him and yeah. uh, he was friends with... Um, Davos, God, what I was think. the character's name? Yes, yeah, Davos. Yeah, yeah. All right, then I guess that leaves it to me. I have two choices for John Silver. What you got? So I was going through my original fan cast and i was like i think i want more people of color in this fan cast although my jim hawkins is technically um a man of color nice but yeah i was like I want some people of color in here so for john silver i have a uh, joe morton who is known for a lot of things uh i put him on this list for his work on scandal as olivia pope's dad oh him. him oh my gosh can i just see this man monologue at jim for like a <laughs> couple of minutes but also I, I think it was because i was thinking of silver's You've got greatness in you, kid. Speech. Yeah. Also, Silver's voice is so very unique in Treasure Planet. Like, it I'm really like is. nobody, nobody sounds like that in real life. <laughs> so I didn't really want to choose somebody who like I want them to make a voice, but already has a distinctive voice. That makes sense. And so Joe Morton to me has a very distinctive voice. He has a very he also has a very fatherly tone as well, but can also be very menacing, which is what happened on Scandal all the time like he would have these 
fatherly monologues to Olivia, Carrie Washington's character, but also at, at the same time, there was like an underlying layer of menace sometimes, depending on what he was monologuing to her about. Sounds intense. Olivia, Olivia would do some stuff that was dumb. And sometimes he needed to be like, what is wrong with you? Just, he's so good at it though. I loved it. <laughs> and then my second choice uh, that I have is Idris Elba. Interesting. Nice. I know that Idris can do the menace, but yes. I also know he can do the fatherly caring stuff. And I think he can combine them both at the same time. The first role I ever saw him in, he was playing the shady brother. So, you know, in this Christmas. Oh. Oh, yeah. And even in in Daddy's Little Girls, uh, his character has, you know, had a rough history. He's a good guy, but he's had a, a rough history. So I love that you just... Him. I love that you just kind of zeroed in on like the blackest movies in his filmography. I know. But He's like, done so much. And you're just like, those so two movies well, that then, only the black people but know. Then, no, no, but then also like menacing Jungle Book. Come on. Okay. Now. Yeah. That's what I was thinking when you said menacing. I was like, yeah, he was terrifying. He was terrifying. He wasn't even there. Uh, Jungle Book. He can do all of the things. He also has a, a very distinctive voice and tone and i can also hear him doing the you've got make makings of greatness in you speech yeah, he can do speeches oh also really good fatherly figure in pacific rim and also very strict and a little menacing in that movie and he gave a speech exactly and you know aliens or something i don't know that's true <laughs> yeah idris elba guys idris elba but also i'd love to see him play a pirate like i feel like that should be on his filmography somewhere that'd be dope so our next character on this list is Dr. Delbert Doppler, an astronomer and family friend who accompanies Jim on his journey to Treasure Planet. However, Doppler is not made for sailing and is known to be clumsy and socially awkward, but his intelligence and love of exploring make up for it. Dallas, who you got? All right, my Dr. Delbert Doppler is John Oliver. Nice. Because, yeah, this dude is just like, I don't know, I just look at him and the way he speaks and carries himself kind of clumsy, like he's smart. But he seems kind of clumsy and you don't really, it's hard to take him seriously, kind of the, the way his character is. And I feel like now I'm insulting John Oliver and I don't mean that at all. <laughs> but it's just like, I feel like John Oliver could play that role very well, especially after seeing him as Zazu. Nice. Like, he mm, could yeah, just, okay. yeah, if you just gave him some dog ears, he already got the glasses and the voice. Yeah, John Oliver. He's my dog, Doppler Doctor. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> all right. Uh, my choice for Dr. Doppler is Matt Smith. Cause... Yo, I think I had Matt yeah. Smith on my original fan cast for this, like back in 2012. I mean, is he one of the doctors? Yeah, yeah, he's the yes, 11th. He is. And like you say, he's like awkward and intelligent and like, that's basically what 11 is. And he's great. So I know Matt Smith can absolutely do it. That's true. I'm also, I just watched Pride and Prejudice and Zombies again recently. Also very socially awkward in that movie. In a very much more Dr. Doppler way than I think the doctor is socially awkward. So many doctors in this sentences. <laughs> All of the doctors. The doctor, the 11th doctor is Dr. Doppler. The doctor, dog, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've got two choices for Dr. Doppler as well. Double Dr. One, Doppler. Yep. Yeah. Dr. Delbert Doppler. <laughs> <laughs> we got to stop. We sound like we're so laughing guys. All right. So my first choice is uh, Taika Waititi interesting okay. i like that because taika in his roles that i have seen i haven't seen all of his work but you know he's eccentric oh well, except okay except for the mandalorian but his characters are typically very eccentric very ridiculous kind of pushing uh the envelope and just thinking about like when he played korg or when he plays adolf hitler in jojo rabbit these are very comedic eccentric roles to play and I think that Doppler is a little bit like that. In fact, I think Taika would have to actually rein it in in order to play Doppler. I agree with that. Um, yeah. But I think that he, I think he could do that because on The Mandalorian, his character is nothing like that because his character is a very a strict about the rules droid. So yeah, I think he could play the character and I think he could pull it off and it would be funny and it would be interesting. Yeah, I'm sure he could like not be crazy for a second. And even if he's not in the movie, if you guys just want to give him this movie to make, like, it would be freaking good. That's an interesting idea. I think you'd pull it off really well, even just as a director. 
Like, he doesn't have to be in it. Just if he was directing it, it still would be, like, a really, really good movie. And then my yeah, other Dr. Doppler, who is my main choice, is Thomas Lennon. Who? Who is n- known for so many things. He's got, like, 160-something credits on IMDb. Goodness gracious. Uh, but I'm based... Yeah, exactly. But I'm basing it on mainly on the things that I've seen him in. So, like, 17 again with Zac Efron. He's really funny in that. Wait, wait. What's his he name? Thomas Lennon. Oh, him. Yeah. That dude is hilarious. He's super funny. That dude is and really like, funny. He's so perfect for this role based off of all the things that I've seen him in. He can do the bumbling, intelligent guy and just be super funny. And it would be it would be great. He's in so many things. <laughs> he's in so much, which is why I was like, I'm not going to try and list off a bunch of credits because you've probably seen him in something. I've never known this man's name, but I've seen him dozens of times. And you've heard him dozens of times because he does voice acting as well. He's a really wow. funny guy, though. I think he recently hosted one of the award shows. And I don't think I watched it, but I definitely like saw some of his like stand-up material that he was doing as the host. And I thought it was freaking hysterical. He's great. Nice. He's a funny dude. He's a very funny dude. His behaviors and the way he moves, I'm like, yeah, I can see you playing this character. Definitely. All right, next up is Captain Emilia Smollett. Yeah. Uh, who is the captain of the RLS Legacy, the vessel that Jim and Doppler hire to take them to Treasure Planet. Amelia is quick-witted, strong-willed, and heroic, but can also be very strict and controlling. Dallas, who you got? Captain Amelia. She is interesting. So, for this role, I was like, I need a badass British lady. Yeah. So, I immediately went to Haley Atwell for my ah. Captain Amelia. Is that why you chose her? Is that the reason? What do you think the reason is, Colin? Tell the people. Share with the the class. You have discussed how she is... Can you use the phrase well endowed in that sense? I have before. I believe you can. You've talked about her titties, is what I'm saying. Have (laughs) I? Have I? Yes, you have. Have I? Yes, you have. Have I? Yes. So, <laughs> so anyway, yes, Haley Atwell has very nice titties. And um, she's a really good actress. She's British. She's hot. She's a badass. I think basically like Agent Carter <laughs> on a ship with cat ears. And I know I'm starting to make it sound a little s- weird. Yeah, it's a little weird. I was about to say, this is basically, I mean, Agent Carter. Yeah, I was going to say like Agent Carter, but captain of a ship in space. A little more yiffy because she has cat ears. And boom, we got a perfect... Captain Amelia and Haley Atwell make it happen. Haley Atwell has <laughs> Haley Atwell has also been in a live action Disney movie before. Oh she's yes, been in two. she was. She's been, Wait, she's been in two. Yeah, she was in the Christopher Robin movie, and she was Cinderella's mom in Cinderella. What? I didn't know about the Cinderella one. Played Lily James's mom. I knew about the Christopher Robin one, but I was like falling asleep <laughs> during a lot of that movie, so I forgot. Yeah, yeah, she plays. Um, yeah, she plays Cinderella's mom for the first like five minutes of the movie and still almost managed to make me cry i was like i need you to stop pulling this peggy carter stuff on me because it's a lot and i don't have it in me she's a good woman she's a good actress that too (laughs) (laughs) colin who did you choose i am disappointed to know you sometimes i just said she's a good woman that's a good thing to say about somebody what's wrong with you that is a good thing to say about somebody colin a good compliment colin which one of us brought up her titties today yeah, which like one of us has brought them up before? Oh, I can't wait for Gabby to hear this in the black hole. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about yeah. Gabby's holes, please. No, it's just one hole, first off. Like she wouldn't Colin, appreciate who did that. You choose? <laughs> Colin, who'd you anyway, choose? For uh, the Yif Master herself. So, For indeed. I... <laughs> okay. Colin. <laughs> Damn it. All right. (laughs) This is a serious podcast. We are serious people. We do serious things. Yes. And now we're talking about a serious cat woman, Captain. Oh, Jesus. So I chose Tandy Newton. Ooh, interesting. I know that name. She's amazing on Westworld. Or at least she was in the first season. I haven't seen anything since then. See, that's my problem is like, that is what I most remember her from. But God, I didn't like that show. But she was great. She was incredible in that. Yeah. I think the first thing I ever remember seeing her in was uh, The Pursuit of Happiness. Oh, was she in that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was the the mom that uh, oh. she dipped out. Uh, 
Yikes. Her small role in Solo, a Star Wars story, you know. Oh, right. Yeah, she was in that too. She the one who uh, is with Woody Harrelson? Yes. Yeah. She was in Mission Impossible, but that was actually the worst Mission Impossible movie. So that's unfortunate. I couldn't tell you. I can't remember which one any of them are. She was in the one with all the slow motion. All right. (laughs) I know it's number two only because I'm on her Wikipedia page right now. Yes. Just two. She's also in Crash while we're listing yeah. things that she's done. I've I've never seen Crash. I know it won the Oscar. Yeah, people were mad about that. People still mad about that. Colin, did you have more to say about Not her? Because really. at this point, we're just listing her movies. I forgot she was in Norbit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Norbit. Norbit's a I good breaking that. point. Yeah. So, <laughs> so my Captain Amelia also was going for British and badass. I chose Kate Beckinsale. Yo, I love it. I meant to mention this for Doppler, but I think I would steer away from the from the yiffy direction of this film. Whoa, 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 whoa! To me, someone to is me. a coward. I, I would just, I would just reimagine they're alien species. Oh, reimagine. They are alien species. They are. Just happen to be dogs like, and cats. Like cowardice. I would reimagine it. I don't know. I'm highly debating it, guys. I'm highly debating. So you don't it. want to see um, Kate Beckinsale as a cat girl? I was about to say. If I kept it, though, Kate Beckinsale would look good as a cat. What a sentence that was. <laughs> so just keep it. Am I wrong? Are you going to tell me that I'm wrong? <laughs> I would never tell yeah, you that. It, okay, first off, it's Kate Beckinsale, right? to me. Yeah. Kate Beckinsale would look good as any species. Okay, that's fair. That's a little weird. I don't I mean, Demi she specified cat. I mean, I don't know why. I specified cat because that's what Captain Amelia is. That's true. Haley Atwell would also look good as a cat. I just like. I just so there we go. All right. Put it out in the open. Yeah. But I no, Kate Beckinsale. Here. I've been okay. a fan of Kate Beckinsale for years now, uh, since I saw Van Helsing for the first time. Oh, yeah. She would be amazing as a pirate. Or, well, she's not a pirate captain. She's just a naval captain. Yeah. But uh, she would be cool as a you know ship captain. I think she would pull off that leadership position very well that very in charge i think i think kate beckinsale has a good commanding presence definitely i've also been a fan of hers because of the underworld movies she's really good in this i don't know man i just really like kate beckinsale i think she she fits for the role i think her voice fits for the character of amelia as well it would be fun it would be so much fun to watch her play this character and she kicks butt so like she's perfect it'd be great i agree i agree with all that everything from the cat to the Underworld. Everything from the cat to the <laughs> underworld to the badassness, all, all of it, just all that. She's yeah, she she fits. She'd be good. Mm-hmm. So our next character on the list is Ben, or Bioelectronic Navigator, who was Captain Flint's navigator trapped on Treasure Planet. Flint took Ben's memory chip, which has led to the robot's zany, hyperactive, and neurotic personality. So who you got, Dallas? So, for the people listening at home who don't know me well. I have a little challenge that I give myself. God damn it. <laughs> For as many fan casts as possible, I will insert either Donald Glover or Will Smith or both. Usually not both. Anyway, Ben is Donald Glover for me. Nice. Because, yeah, I was looking through this list of characters and I was like, who can I make Donald Glover? And none of them really worked for me except for Ben because Ben doesn't have to be, was it Martin Short who played him? Yes. Yeah, he doesn't have to be like that type of wacky he could be any type of wacky he's just a robot with his brain missing so he could be teddy perkins i don't want that oh no please don't <laughs> no, no. that's not allowed you don't do that, that, that this movie becomes a horror movie real quick i'm just pointing out that there's a lot of range in what zany and wacky means and there's a lot of range in donald glover's acting ability so whatever way he wants to take it as long as he doesn't take it full teddy perkins then i'm, I'm with don't, don't take it down that way on the spectrum no no but yeah donald glover he's dope and i want him to be in as many movies as possible so now he's a robot speaking of robots colin <laughs> who's your ben I, what uh what does speaking of robots have to do with you like robots mm, that's an acceptable way to say that how would you say it that's that's what i would say it's just that you usually okay. go a little bit further i wouldn't say that oh i would colin who would you choose <laughs> <laughs> for ben i chose Richard Iowati, because yeah, he can do that. Oh, God, would you know him from anything at all? He was in How do you spell his last seen. name? A-Y-O-A-D-E. I know he was in something that you've seen, and I can't remember what it is. Oh, he looks familiar. Oh, that guy. I know that something. guy. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, he, he was on good. The Mandalorian. I didn't know that. Oh. So he was. Didn't know that. But anyway, yeah, he's really fun. I love him in the IT crowd and other things that he's been in. He was in The Watch. That's yes. what I remember. That's what from. I first saw him in The Watch. I was like, oh my God, this is quite a movie. Jamarcus, Jamarcus. that was his name in The Watch. Nice name. Mm hmm. Oh, he was apparently in the Lego movie too as a voice. Anyway. He was the ice cream cone. Yeah, because I remember that. Uh, <laughs> he's great. He's really funny. And I feel like his voice would lend itself to a robot very well. Definitely. He played, oh, no, he did. He played a droid in The Mandalorian. He was that droid with yeah. the prisoner people who was kind of an asshole. So, yeah, he can totally do Ben. And I think it would work really well. Yeah. Somebody saw his potential, Colin, and put him as a Star Wars droid. Speaking of Star Wars droids, that's exactly the method I would use if I was to make this movie. I would definitely try and do the droid the same way that they do in the Star Wars movies. So there would be an actual person on set playing the character. So my first choice is Simon Pegg. Oh my God, that's amazing. I would love that. Simon Pegg would be great in this role. I might vote for you in the Twitter poll. <laughs> <laughs> like I was going to have, I had Alan Tudyk on this list too originally, but then I was like, we choose Alan Tudyk for like everything that requires a, a voice of some sort. So I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that up a little bit. But Simon Pegg would be really good as Ben and be I fantastic. don't really think I need to go into an explanation as to why like if you've seen Simon Pegg in movies <laughs> you you kind of know why he's super funny he can do wacky and crazy and yeah it's fine he'd, he'd be great at that and um, he's been in the then, Star Trek movie so he has like space he's been in, ship he's been in a Star thing. Trek movie and he's been in a Star Wars movie so wow yeah he's been all over all over space yeah He's also written a Star Trek movie, so, you know. Nice. And then uh, the other choice, which I literally just added before we started recording, is Michael Sheen. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, he, okay. yeah, okay. Yeah, he's really eccentric on Prodigal Son, and sometimes his eccentricities are funny on that show. Like, they're kind of comical occasionally, Like, but he's a serial killer, and... Um, I don't want that type of dark humor. I was thinking not. more that, Aziraphale, but that also works. I have not watched that show all the way through. I saw the first episode. It's only six episodes, my dude. I know. She got other stuff to do. Does she? <laughs> I watched the first episode with somebody else who was like, who kind of made me watch it. So. Oh, no. Is and it I was one like, of those, oh. You have to wait for that person to watch more of it, but then that's never going to happen. No, so absolutely. It's it. not actually. They they just wanted me to see the episode because they wanted to get me into the show. And I did think that it was really interesting. I just never went back to watch it. I really like him on Prodigal Son where he is very funny um, because he's so like he's a very charismatic serial killer who is a little bit crazy, which, you know, that's how it is. So take out the serial killer part and the darkness, and I think you would make a good Ben. I feel it. And then the last character on our list is Sarah Hawkins, who is Jim's mother who owns an inn and just wants what's best for her son after mostly raising him on her own. Sarah is hardworking, kind, and caring, and clearly needs a break. Definitely. She'd be looking tired. She needs a break. Also, fun fact, on the wiki, it mentions that apparently she might have had Jim at the age of, like, 17. Ooh. Which is Damn why wrong. she looks so young. Yeah, it's it's implied in some book somewhere that she was she might have been seventeen and her husband might have been nineteen. There is a possibility Oof. that it was a shotgun wedding. Wow. Yeah. Well, I never. Well, I never. So yeah, Sarah Hawkins definitely needs a break. <laughs> yeah. Dallas, who you got? It's actually good because my Sarah actually looks pretty young, but we'll get to that. So when I was gonna have uh, Diego as my gym, I decided. He's Colombian. I need his mom to be Colombian. So I had a list of Colombian actresses. But then when I changed it to Asher Angel, I was like, well, he's Jewish. So I need a Jewish actress. So my actress is Jewish. I picked Alison Brie because <laughs> she oh, definitely okay. does look young. She looks young. And I've seen, first off, she's amazing. She was in a community and I had a whole crush on her for like a couple years. And then community died or whatever. And then I was like, oh, where's Alison Brie? And then she was in Glow. And Glow is kind of the reason why I cast her here because she is just so tired and so stressed out for most of that show. She's just like a hardworking, aspiring actress who's just trying to make it in the game. And it's just a rough time. And I feel like Sarah is just having a rough time. And Allison Brie could definitely portray that, but also look young enough that she could have had Asher Angel when she was 17. 
Oh yeah, definitely. I'm looking up the age difference right now, and it definitely works. She's like 20 years older than him. So yeah, boom. I was like, yeah, I think she's like 37. He's like 18, maybe something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He's like 17. Who? He's a young one. He's but yeah, big. she's also, you know, funny and very what? pretty. What? I just wonder where you were going with that. I wonder what I was going with that, and I found it. Mm. I'm what? glad you found it. Me too. Uh, Colin always seems to think I'm going to say something crazy. Because you usually do. That's not true. Colin, who you got? <laughs> so uh, I aged her up mainly because I had an actress in mind and I wasn't going to change my mind. So my choice is Laurie Metcalf, because as far as I'm concerned, you need someone to play a mom. It pretty much has to be Laurie Metcalf at this point. Like, she You know that that's who Bird. plays the mom. Well, you Wait, know that, that she does movie? the voice of the character, right? Yeah. Oh, hot damn. Cool. Just get her back. I don't care. <laughs> She's still you aged her way up, dude. I listen, man. Have you seen Lady Bird? Don't. It's not that great. But the mom. No, I haven't seen. La- you know, I haven't mm. seen Lady Bird. I know it's not that great. It's not worth your time. But the mom is fantastic. Colin, you're going to upset the whites. <laughs> I don't care. That movie is boring. <laughs> There's like one scene in it I liked, and that's it. That was like a minute long, if that. Okay, Colin. When the white twenty-something-year-old girls start picking in your house. Lord Jesus. Let's see what happens. Let them come. I don't care. They're going to stomp you out in their Uggs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to take that as a sign that I can go. Um, Wick is bland. <laughs> oh, my God. Colin is taking shots that taking I would expect to be taken. I would be willing, also, hold on. Oh, I'd be willing to bet money that her spice rack is salt and pepper and nothing else. She ain't got a spice rack. Colin, question. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Who is your uh, gym again? Uh, Maisie Williams. Oh, Maisie. How old is she? Um, Young. On. What were we saying, like 20? 23. Okay. Is she 23 now? She is 23. Whoa. So that means your Sarah would have had her when she was 41 years old. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like that. Like, that's the opposite yeah. side of the spectrum of, like, struggling to have kids. Like, when you're 17, <laughs> you're 17 and you're struggling to, like you know make it through but you're 41 you're just struggling to literally make it through the the birth (laughs) dallas Dallas, yes she's she just she that's she needs a break yeah she needs a break she's 64 years old okay to me who's your your, sarah so like dallas i needed to find a mom who was the same ethnicity as the gym that i chose um and benjamin wadsworth is a number of things i chose to (laughs) He is. He's it's like, a number you remember, of things. You exactly. remember when I was naming off Jordan Fisher's ethnicities? Yeah, you just started pointing to countries on a map and saying that he was. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like that. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up real quick. It's exactly like that. According to his IMDb page, he is of Mexican, English, Native American, Iranian, French, and Swedish ancestry. Okay, do me an important question. Yeah. How many parents does this dude have? <laughs> I'm sure he only has two. But yeah, I went for Mexican because I've seen him play uh, a Latinx character. So okay. the first person that I chose is Eva Longoria. I love it already. Because Eva Longoria is great. Show is. I don't know what else there is to say about that. Especially She's good at playing a mom. She was a mom yeah. in uh, that Dora movie that came out like last year. I didn't see that one. But yeah, I, I mean, Sarah's in, not really in the movie too much. But I think Eva Longoria has the name and the talent to pull off this small role and still make an impression. Definitely. And then right before we started podcasting, Dallas sent a message that made me realize, oh, I should put her on the list, too. I got to put Paula Nunez on here. Nice. (laughs) Because she's even a few years younger than Eva Longoria. And I think she actually probably looks a little bit more like Benjamin than Eva Longoria does. Probably. If I can. Like, I'm trying to picture him in my head. I think so. But also, she's great. She's fantastic. Loved her in Bad Boys for Life. Want to see her in more things. So Same. This might be too small of a role for her, in my opinion. But also, once again, like I said with Eva Longoria, it's a small role. But I feel like she would make an impression in that role. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so those are all the characters. I do have a bonus casting, though, for a character that does not even exist in this movie. Also, I just want to say it sounds like she has a bonus casting for a character that doesn't exist. We'll get to that. That's not how it works. It's how it works, Colin. Characters. Oh no, I didn't invent this character. Now I'm confused. Did you just Dallas, pick a Treasure Island you were character? Saying. 
Oh, yes. What yeah. I was going to say. It sounds like we're trying to give Pixar a run for their money with the hot moms, and I'm about it. <laughs> I, Dallas. I appreciate us. Dallas, please. Dallas, we're Well, we're not you. You it. pick the freaking... I can only take so much of you. <laughs> and I don't even get to see yeah. you that much anymore. And this is what you want to be doing in the short time we get to talk to each other. You just have to learn to take more of me, Colin. To me. Oh, yes. who is your... Hey God. <laughs> to me. Who is your bonus character? So I was on the wiki page for Treasure Planet, and apparently in the scrapped sequel that they were planning to make. Ooh. I'm sad now that I know that this is a thing that was gonna happen. But the sequel was gonna take place while Jim was at the Naval Academy, and there was gonna be a girl at the Naval Academy who is like they have like an enemies to lovers relationship where like she keeps up with him and they just kind of hate each other at first and then end up falling in love. So I cast the girl who would have played his love interest. Because my Treasure Planet would get a sequel, dang it. So the character's name was Kate. And I chose Tati Gabrielle from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Is that Prudence? She's name. awesome. Yes, that's Prudence. She's awesome. And I know that she could play a badass, which Kate would have had to be a badass so that she could keep up with Jim and put him in his place. So yeah, she that's my intense. bonus casting. What? So she looks intense from these pictures. She's pretty intense. Also, you know, she'd probably look good in some future garb, so... Definitely. I agree. It would be dope. So, guys, right. thank you guys for joining us. That is our fan cast for Disney's very underrated Treasure Planet, the one that actually deserves to have a live action. That in Atlantis probably more than any other. It's funny. After you watch Treasure Planet on Disney+, Plus, they're like, hey, you probably like Atlantis. Check that out. And they're right. They are right. I was <laughs> explaining it to my niece because she had never heard of Atlantis. And this was after we watched Treasure Planet. She was like, what's that one? And I was like, it's it's kind of like what we just watched, but in the water. <laughs> It's in the past and in water. Yeah, I was like, you know, it's a, I don't just watch it. Thank you, audience, for listening to the ramblings of three friends and their space nonsense. Anyway, let us know what you think about our picks. Created? Yeah, that was a good one. I like that. I thought That's yours is better than mine. We're not fan casting that one. Oh, what, 2001 A Space Odyssey? Yeah. Definitely not planning to do that. I don't that even know what Although, the characters are in that movie. Uh, There's Dave. I would love to do like a reimagining of like Treasure Island. I mean, this is a reimagining of Treasure Island, but yes. like us doing our own versions of Honey. what we would like to see from a Treasure Honey. Island movie. You got five seasons of that. No, 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 no. That is a prequel. And I, in my Treasure Island movie, would be the sequel to that prequel. All right, that's fair. That's the imagining that I would make of that. Continue, Dallas. Now I'm confused. The sequel to that prequel, which would make it just Treasure Island? So, right? Yeah, just Treasure Island. Um, well, no, but the thing is, Black Sails is a far more adult version of that world because it's, you know, they try and take real pirate things and make it as accurate to history as possible. People be naked and having sex and drinking and, you know, having stuff chopped off. And Oh. Yeah. It's a great show. I would highly recommend it to anybody out there. I think there was only four seasons, Colin. Um, was there? I just remember yeah, I didn't yeah. watch much of the last one and I just assumed it was the fifth. No, Never I think finished. it's four. But yeah, I would highly recommend that show. If I would, were to do a Treasure Island reimagining that was not Treasure Planet, I would make a Treasure Island movie that was in the same vein as Black Sails, but it would have to be like rated R probably. I'd watch it. I kind of want to fan cast that. I might use like a lot of the same cast. Oh, anyway, yes. Thank you, audience. Let us know what you think of our picks. Let us know who your choices are. Let us know who your pirates and your teenagers and your cat people are. Would you guys want to see a Treasure Planet live action? I definitely would, but you're not me. Thank you, Crown Digital, Brandon and Io, for putting us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you to me for editing, putting the pictures on YouTube so people can know who we're talking about, because I didn't know, like, half of Colin's picks. But that's just because I don't watch the shows you guys watch. Also, to me, thank you for making sure our picks were very diverse today. I tried my best. Yes, and speaking of diversity, thank you, Colin, for calling out Greta Gerwig and her legions of... Lack of. Caucasian. And <laughs> yeah, just Also, Colin, thank you for fighting for furry rights when Demi suggested she was going to make the cat and dog disappear from the oh, movie. Oh, buddy, if that's what you need. I didn't I say got... disappear. I just said I would reimagine. <laughs> I did not that's say disappear. To me. Just re- we don't stand for that on this podcast. That's you said erasure. that's erasure. That. It's not erasure. <laughs> yes, it Very is. Erasure. It's not erasure. It's erasure not. people too, kind of. Not if I'm reimagining. They could still be a dog and a cat. They just won't look as human. Okay, what? I see what you mean. Are they going to be, what? No, what? Explain. She what? means they look more like a dog and a cat and less like oh, she humans really with a dog. Right? <laughs> okay. Okay. I can, Wait, Demi, is Amelia going to look like, is Amelia going to look like the movie Cats for you? Uh. 
<laughs> Never well, mind. I hope we not. don't want it. Nope. Take it back. We don't need that anymore. Never <laughs> mind. We'll just stick to the no. Mm -mm. No, like I said, I'm still debating. I don't know how I would reimagine it, but you know, get creative with it. Talk to the concept artist people. Word. The anyway. imaginary ones that don't exist. Back to you, audience. You do exist. If you would like to talk to us on the medias, you can find us on Twitter at y'all underscore different. You can find us on Tumblr at Creative Differences Podcast. And you can find us on Facebook by searching Creative Differences. Also, we have Instagram now. And we post on it and everything like a real podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Creative Differences Podcast, just like Tumblr. If you want to find me personally and just check in on me, ask me how I'm doing. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at a king named Simba. You can find me on Twitter at Duck McDuck. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dreamy Films. Dreamy is spelled D R E E M I. Thanks again for joining and, us. And excuse, wait, are you doing it or am I doing it? Let's both I do it. You both. Got one. Yeah, go, you go first. All right. You can find Gabby on Twitter at Bury Your Treasure in My Hole. Oh my God. <laughs> um, wow. That's X marks the spot. I think Ooh, you should have won two. Oh yes, good job. I feel like shoot, you should have went last because that's just. <laughs> That's just rough. Tell us what's yours. Oh, I was going to say, you can find Gabby on Twitter at Catgirl in space. Space is all cap. <laughs> that is definitely a, a lot more innocent. <laughs> right? I was going to go like, oh, it's palatable. Colin just went straight for her hole. Mm. Also, that's a whole sentence. Like, haha, whole sentence. That's like an entire <laughs> sentence. You can't, that can't be, a, whatever. It's fine. Gabby, I'm sorry. for. I apologize for Colin's behavior. I'm not. <laughs> anyway, it's been different. Have a good one, guys. Stay safe.